All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today on the show, we have Rahul Sharma, who is a dynamic leader from India and the author of Be Action Oriented and Habits for Miracles. Rahul, how are you doing today? I'm doing amazing, Tim. Thank you for asking. How about you? I am also doing great. Appreciate you asking. And we like to jump right in. So if you could start with telling us a little bit more about yourself and what you like to do for fun, that'd be great. Absolutely. So, so Tim, uh, as you have shared, I'm from India, currently residing in Washington, D.C. metro area. And I'm a leadership coach, author, and a transformational speaker. And for fun, I love to play with my kids, love swimming, and I love to play Sudoku. Oh, what was that? What was that last thing? Sudoku? Sudoku, yes. Yes. I so those you. puzzles, those uh, nine uh, number grid. So that is my favorite pastime. And uh, we I just downloaded another game, Word Scrapers. So that is also has uh, excited me. So that is my now another go-to place to work with my mind. I gotcha. I gotcha. And um, how long have you been playing Sudoku? It's been a few years, uh, Tim. So whether I'm on a flight or uh, whenever I get time, that's when uh, I'm playing it. And uh, now I'm on the verge of teaching my my son and daughter. They're nine and ten. Uh, it's a little challenging. They don't find it exciting, but I'm just getting it there uh, because that's a good brain exercise for us to have. Yeah. I got you. Mm-hmm. I got you. Well, tell us a little bit more about um, your two books, Be Action Oriented and Habits for Miracles. Yes. So uh, Be Action Oriented. Uh, I wrote this book when I was going through uh, a challenging uh, phase in my career and where I couldn't see uh, the next steps. I couldn't see uh, getting enough directions. And I was having that self-pity mode that uh, I'm getting too comfortable. And uh, I wanted to bounce back. And that uh, what I wrote in that book is my bounce back. I would not say bounce back story, but the way I bounce back. So I'm talking about in the book that what are the five things that we need to know that will enable us to take consistent action? Because I believe is consistent action is what uh, allow you to reach closer to your goals. So that is about it. Habits for Miracles, Tim, uh, I wrote it uh, to talk about the miracles that have happened in in my own life. And with miracles, I'm not talking about the supernatural uh, powers. I'm talking about uh, the way I define miracles is anything that you are able to do that you could not do before is in a way is a miracle. Uh, So so miracle I've given as an acronym, and then I talk about eight habits uh, that allow you to design your life, your way. Oh, I like that. I like that. So miracle as an acronym. Do you have the acronym off the top of your head? Yes. Yeah, so so M uh, stands for mind talk. Uh, I uh, stands for ideation. The mm-hmm. R goes for reading. A goes for analyzation. The C goes for calmness. The L goes for listening. And here I'm talking more about self-listening. E goes for exercise, and S goes for silence. Mm. I like it. I like it a lot. Thank you. Well, there we go. So be action-oriented. You were in a slump, kind of, not not really a slump, but you got comfortable in your career. You couldn't see next steps. And so you talked about the action you needed to take and the consistent daily action you needed to take to get you out of that kind of stagnation and into a point where you were more inspired in your work life. And then Habits for Miracles is about understanding miracles in the sense that um, through these habits, you can become a person that can do more than you could have done before. And so it goes through those habits in miracles as an acronym to kind of transform your life into something you want to design. Is that right? Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, it's uh, the Habits for Miracle is for unleashing your true potential. Sometimes we ourselves don't know what we are capable of. Uh, that's where I always recommend my my uh, team members to step out of the comfort zone, to, to do something that they have never done before, experience those aspects that will allow them to uh, get uh, different experience. And those different experiences, something 
that will make them vulnerable and make them do things that uh, they would love to do. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, tell us a little bit more about your motivation. What really gets you up and keeps you going every day? Uh, for me, it is uh, when I see someone uh, to someone struggling, someone uh, is looking for help. Uh, if if I'm able to help someone, if I'm able to see that through my intervention, that individual is able to lead a happier and uh, a better life, is what motivates me. Uh, I always uh, strive for for excellence and. Uh, Sometimes it, it, it comes in uh, my way as well, but uh, my motivation is to, to, to be the right and the better role model for my kids, uh, as well as to help someone who is in need. Uh, that is what keeps me going. I gotcha. I gotcha. And has that always been your motivator or did the shift happen at some point in your life? So the shift happened, uh, Tim. Um, after completing 15 years in my corporate world, uh, that's when I realized that it's time for me to give back to society. Uh, I was too much focused on uh, on the corporate stuff. And uh, that's where those thoughts came in. And as I was growing up, I have seen my both my parents uh, going above and beyond to give back to society. Uh, my, my dad has been a government servant in India and, and then served as a uh, administrator for one of the very famous temple in India. And uh, so I've seen him going above and beyond. Uh, so I'm just following the legacy. Uh, yeah. And that's that shift happened somewhere in 2016, 17. Um, and I changed the way I was looking at things. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Well, awesome, man. Let's go ahead and jump into your dreams and goals. Now tell us about your vision for your life and your career. So a uh, vision for life, I would say, is to uh, be healthy and happy life. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not envisioning uh, with God's grace, we have everything. So I'm not envisioning for those materialistic things. I'm, I'm envisioning for more healthy and happy life. Um, from a career perspective, I have, uh, I'm very slowly moving to the next phase of my career. I've been with the uh, corporate world for 20 plus years. I'm still uh, the vice president of learning and development. And in the next phase of my career, I want to uh, establish my, my career into more public speaking, where through my experience, through my words, through my uh, uh, concepts that I've written in the book, I can awaken people and help, help them do their best uh, in their life. I gotcha. I gotcha. And so public speaking, do you see yourself speaking primarily for companies, more for summits and like retreats? So I guess more towards professional development, public speaking, where you go into Google and do a talk or more for like a Tony Robbins-esque event where you go do a talk? Uh, so I'm not envisioning the Tony Robbins event. Uh, and uh, it's, it, will, it would be more... Uh, from the corporate side, uh, mm -hmm. Tim. And, and the second aspect that I want to help is the underprivileged folks uh, who could not afford to, uh, to, to pay the fees to, to attend the public speaking events. And uh, I do believe, just like uh, Warren Buffett, that public speaking is the skill. It is the skill that will take you uh, to, to places. So I want to inculcate those skills early on. Uh, and uh, one of the mission that I have is to set up a public speaking school where I can teach uh, students, uh, where I can teach uh, you know folks who, who, who are not as good as they want to be in public speaking. So public speaking school, I will have one of my in probably next three years. Yeah, I gotcha. I gotcha. And the public speaking school, will it be something where you're designing the curriculum or will you adopt some curriculum from other spots? Um, I, I want to design, I, I want to make it simple. Uh, so yes, so it will be my own, uh, uh, own methods uh, with God's grace. My, my wife is also an awesome public speaker. 
uh, my my daughter is is growing up, so she would be the legacy uh, for us. So I want to utilize her. I want to utilize uh, her because those kids. So if I can teach those this skill early on, Tim, it will change their life. It it will change the trajectory of life. When I was young, as my case, I was not a public speaker. I was, in fact, I was, and in fact, I was telling with them that I was afraid of speaking with people. I was more an introvert. I developed my public speaking skills primarily when I was doing my management course. Uh, that's where, you know, probably when I was in early 20s. Uh, but if I would have learned this early on, I'm sure things would have been a little better. I don't know how much better, but it would, it would be a little different. So that's where I'm focusing on. Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. And what do you think is the key to good public speaking? I would say from my perspective, the, the first thing is confidence. Uh, you need to be confident uh, about uh, about yourself. It's not about the topic. It's not about, I mean, topic you can read, but that is number one is confidence. And, and number two is, uh, your uh, it's not more about the speaking it's about your non-verbal language which is the facial expressions your eye contact your hand gesture because uh, 90% of our communication is non-verbal yeah so I, it's not about the words it is about the other aspects so those are the two things I would say are critical from a public speaking uh, aspect your confidence and your nonverbal skills. Mm. I like that you brought up nonverbal yeah. skills um, because 90% of communication is nonverbal. And I think a lot of us get caught up on words and then we forget body language when we're learning about communication, whether it be in a one-on-one -on -one manner or a public speaking manner. And so tell us a little bit more, dive into nonverbal communication for us. You said eye contact. You mentioned gestures. Is there more to it or is it really just honing in on those two things and making sure you make eye contact with specific people in the crowd and your gestures match up with the emotion you're trying to um, kind of communicate to the crowd? So it's definitely more. But uh, since you spoke on the eye contact, eye contact is big for me. And I was not, uh, and it changed for me when, uh, and I would say it's somewhere in 2012, Tim, I was attending a training event. And this individual was one of a senior leader in our organization, technology expert, and I was attending his event. And what I learned about eye contact in that session completely changed the way I was doing it. What I noticed is as he was walking in the room, mm -hmm. He was making a real eye contact with the uh, listeners. So he was just not moving his eyes around the room. He was literally doing eye contact with the audience. Now I understand if we would be thousand people, it's not possible. In that room, we were just 20, 25. But that really made an impact on me. That, oh my God, this person is talking to me. He's just not talking to the crowd. So if you are in a small setting, if you can make that one-on-one -on -one eye contact as you are moving around the room, it will really make a difference. Number two, I would say, is your facial expressions. You know, you, your facial expression, you need to have a smile on your face. Yep. Uh, your, your, your face needs to look as, you know, that you are a positive person. You are, you are bringing in positive energy. Because as a speaker, as a trainer, or as a professor, no one wants to learn with someone who is bringing in the negative energy in the room. Uh, so, uh, and positive energy, when we are smiling, it's, it's, it comes natural. So those are the things. Uh, the other thing I would say is the way you are standing uh, in front of the audience. It talks about your confidence. Um, the way, whether you are uh, playing with any of the gadgets that you have in hand, whether it is a ring, whether it is your glasses, whether it is a chain, whether it is a phone or pen, we need to avoid doing all those things because that becomes a distraction 
uh, amongst our conversation. Mm. I gotcha. I gotcha. And so like, is it the same in one-on-one -on -one communication when you see people like fidgeting or you see people playing with a ring or playing with a yes. chair or something like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is the way I look at it. Uh, so the way I look at it, when you are playing with any of these gadgets, Tim, nine out of 10 times you are nervous or you are not confident on what you are going to talk. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and if you are a leader, that is not a good sign to, to give to your team member that you are not confident. Um, I would say that if you are not confident about something or if you are having a bad day, my request would be is to push up that meeting. Uh, move it to another day when, when you are fresh rather than having a meeting when you are not at the right mindset. I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah, I'll have to keep in mind the the fidgeting. I, I've noticed that yeah, fidgeting will happen for me in one of two ways. It's either I'm not confident, I'm feeling a little scared, trying to get some nervous energy out, or I really just don't want to be there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so so in other words, you are showing if you see from a little higher perspective, it's a disrespect to the person sitting next to you or sitting opposite to you, uh, you are giving a sign that you're not welcome. Mm -hmm. And th that definitely will have an impact on your communication. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. That's interesting. I'll definitely have to keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah. Well, cool, man. Tell us about any other dreams or goals that you have. So right now we have be healthy and live a happy life and move to the next phase of your career, which is establishing yourself in public speaking, specifically corporate gigs, and then for unprivileged, underprivileged people who can't afford the fees. Any other dreams and goals that you want to chat about? So uh, there's another uh, goal I would say that I have or a dream is to have a place for um, old individuals or elderly individuals to come and, and play, uh, have some fun time, and this place, the way I'm in, I'm envisioning it will be having positive vibes, positive energy. Uh, because when we are growing, when we are having some, some illness, it's so important that there is the positivity around us. And I see that is that at times is not there. So that is one uh, dream or goal that I have. So that will help elderly folks to have some fun time. So to watch movies and then but more than the activities it is the environment it is the the mindset it is the um vibe of that place so that's something on the cards i gotcha i gotcha and when do you see yourself developing this is it a place where they would live permanently or would they come every week or a couple of days a week so it would be more like a club. I'm not envisioning to to have a old age home, but it will be more like a club where they can come. Uh, because I have seen, and this is something uh, I have seen that either grandparents are walking, uh, taking their kids out or grandkids out for a walk or for to a park. So maybe I'm just thinking out loud that their grandkids can also come and we have something for them. And then, Grandparents. So I'm just, I'm also getting some ideas as we are talking, but uh, definitely that one place is on the cards. I gotcha. I gotcha. Sounds good. Sounds good. And do you see yourself um, starting that up in the next year? Are you going to develop it more as you get to the point where you're having grandkids? Where do you see that? No. So probably uh, this uh, developing of my public speaking school. And then this will kind of go hand in hand. Um, so, so probably the three-year timeline that I have. And then this is all dependent on how I do well on my next career, which I'm confident that I'll do get well because you need resources yeah. uh, to do all these things. So with God's grace, uh, everything will fall in place in, in probably a three-year time frame from now. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Well, awesome. Any other dreams or goals that you want to put on here before we move on? Uh, 
I would not say, uh, yeah, you can say the dream that how you can make uh, a ripple effect uh, of positivity. Uh, oh, I got you. I got you. Okay. Because sometimes you 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 cannot be positive all the time. So, so how and what you need to do at twenty four seven? No, you're positive. <laughs> so and then you can make people around you positive. Uh, you can or more than positive is also like happy. Mm -hmm. uh, so at least the people whose life I'm touching, how I can make them happy. Uh, but I do not want to have a dream or goal that I cannot control, Tim. So because it's, it's also important that it's, it has to be in your control. Um, yeah. So so that is another thing is how I can make people uh, happy, how I can help them realize their dreams come true. I love it. Well, what are the top one to two skills that you need to develop right now to make these dreams and goals come true? One thing uh, I would say uh, entrepreneurial skills. So I have the entrepreneurial mindset. I do think I have those skills, but actually I've not done it. So that is where I need to uh, focus on. Um, the second skill, Tim, I would say is uh, the financial skills, like, you know, projecting the revenue, projecting the um, the uh, all the expenses and also that financial aspect of setting up a business. Uh, those are the two skills I would say uh, would need to be uh, critical for me. What was the first one again? You said entrepreneurial skills. Yeah, so entrepreneurial skills that uh, in my mind, you know, those, uh, those, those ability to, uh, or the places to know from where you can get loans, where where you can, uh, you know, get some funding, where you can. So when you are in a corporate, there are a lot of things given because you don't do those things. But when you're an entrepreneur, you have to do everything on your own, uh, right from, you know, leasing a place, uh, establishing an entity, having a website, so there are too many things, and and I have gone a, a fair bit of this while being an author and while uh, in the process of establishing my uh, public speaking business. But I think there is more to it. So I want to, um, you know, get a mentor, an entrepreneur who can guide me and, and take me to the next level. So entrepreneurial skills and the financial skills. I got gotcha. you. And books of accounting. And so would you add to those entrepreneurial skills, marketing, sales, and operations, or is it more the logistical side of entrepreneurship where it's like, I really just need the loans, need the funding. I, I feel confident about my marketing and sales uh, skills. No, no, no. Marketing and sales is, is also very, very critical, very, very important. And um, it, it sometimes we ignore, not because we want to ignore, it's just we don't see the impact of it. And if you want to be in the business, it's you, know, you have to be a good um, digital marketing individual who 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 makes sure that your message is being put across to people. So marketing is is essential. Yes, I got you. And what are the highest impact daily actions that will tick the needle forward towards your dreams and goals? Uh, one of the aspect would be to keep myself healthy mm -hmm. because if I am not healthy, if I am not able to uh, do my own uh, things, then I will not be able to help others. So, so that is number one. Number two uh, would, be, and when I say I'm keeping healthy, I need to do my own, the regular exercises. I need to make sure that I'm doing uh, right things, right healthy eating. Uh, and the other thing is investing 30 minutes time towards learning new things, towards learning uh, the area which is not my expertise. So that's self-learning and then self-care. I would maybe do the combo, self-care, self-learning. There we go. There we go. And is learning for you mainly reading a book or is it other things? No, other. Uh, so so I, learn, um, I learn from every experience of my life, whether uh, it's a movie, whether it's a, a TV show, whether it is watching uh, 
my my kids game watching the practice reading books so it's just not a movie or it's just not about reading uh, i do online reading and reading articles journals so talking to intellectual people like you so that also helps me to uh, increase my knowledge so yeah. all sorts of learning i got gotcha. you very nice i like that learning from every aspect of your life because there really is like um I think there's two parts to learning. It's like you intake new information and you're processing it for the first time, or you're getting a repetition of an idea that you already hold true. And so you're learning it more, if that makes correct. sense. Correct, correct, correct. So, One thing I would add, Tim, to your question that you asked, um, how, what it will take to daily action or how I will reach closer to the goal. One of the things which I realized not just with me, with, with many of us, is we learn things in a specific way and we have we have gained some knowledge. But that knowledge is good for a certain level. Now, if you have to up your game, yep. you need to unlearn things and then relearn. So, so in, in my experience, I have seen that learning is fairly easy versus unlearning very difficult to unlearn and you have to uh, subconsciously you have to work with your mind to unlearn those things so uh, for any individual if we have to offer a game we need need to do our fair share of unlearning so that we our mind is empty and ready to take newer things because if it's just something like you know if your dark glass is full you can't pour in the water even if you pour in the water the water will spill yep so you need to create space in your mind to have that new information. Yeah. And so how do you go about unlearning? Like, is it like, I'm going to forget, I'm going to forget, I'm going to forget. Or like, what's the uh, problem? No, so, so more than, so, okay. So let me give you an example. Uh, unlearning. So, so let's say uh, when I started my swimming regime after two decades, it was just, just post-pandemic. It was really challenging for me to go back in the pool. And I realized only when I back, went in the pool. And the reason was that I was out of shape. I was not in, in action. So where I'm going at with this is I was knowing the way of swimming, but I was not knowing what all the techniques I need to use to increase my speed, to make sure that I don't get uh, dehydrated or I don't get tired soon. So what I did was the way I was doing my regular swimming, I, I realized that, man, if I do a backstroke, doing a backstroke allows me to get some breather mm. as compared to doing my normal freestyle. So it is just telling my subconscious mind that, hey, man, it's just not only the uh, free freestyle swimming. You can also do backstroke. You can also do uh, you know other strokes of swimming. So that's what I mean when I say unlearning. It's not about uh, you telling that I want to forget. I want to forget. You just learn the better way of doing things. Uh, yeah. For example, uh, my my niece is doing an internship on a data analysis. And I was just chatting with her and she was asking her, what all you do? So she said that my supervisor, she was having three different Excel sheet and she was looking after each and every Excel sheet to make the fourth one. And I just taught her that she don't need to look all three. There are ways, effective ways, effective tools for you to do better job on Excel. So, so that person, that supervisor, both, they need to unlearn what they have been doing. Yeah. And so the way of unlearning is when you learn a new things, when you become better at it, automatically the old things will get upside down. Yeah. I got you. I got you. Mm -hmm. I like that. Well, what character trait do you most need to develop right now to make your dream life come true? Uh, I would say is... Uh, being persistent in taking action. Um, and I would say it would be 
that determination, that, that confidence, that because the things that I'm dreaming for, I have not done it before. Uh, none, in, none of my family members have done it before. Uh, so it is definitely I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. And for that, I need to have that courage, that determination to make things happen. Yeah. And if there were one or two people you could meet right now, this could be a specific person or a type of person, and they'd really help you take that next step towards your dreams and goals. Who would they be and how would they help you? Uh, next person, I would uh, speak uh, to folks who are already doing public speaking business. Um, or I would not say business uh, team, I would say more classes, uh, public speaking school. Uh, so I will uh, read or I will understand what they're doing, how they're doing, what's their business model. Um, and that will help me in knowing how much space I would need, who will be my target audience, the marketing, the website, and all those logistics. Uh, so that would be something I would do. I will also do a similar thing for, you know, what kind of uh, activity places are available for elderly uh, folks. Yeah. Uh, what, what are they doing? What are they offering? How much they are charging? Um, is it free? I, I want to make it free, to be honest. It's not something that I want to charge for it. Uh, it would be more for giving back to society. Uh, because I do believe that uh, the stage that my father is in right now, if he is able to step out, if he's able to meet with those like-minded people, I think he would be a different person. And this COVID, he, just before COVID, he was all good. The COVID just made him, and it's not that he got infected with COVID, the situation of COVID, where you were not allowed to step out. So you just stayed within those four walls uh, for almost two to three months is what really uh, made an impact. So I want to look at those facilities, age-old uh, facilities for elderly patients and yeah. do my own research. Yeah. Did you um? Did you ever hear of the Dale Carnegie School or any other schools that you want to look at specifically who are already doing the public speaking thing or are you still looking for somebody you want to model? Um. So I, I want to more focus. So he, um, so where I am targeting is I want to target this school uh, specifically in India, mm -hmm. uh, and specifically in a city which is under underdeveloped or developing city where they don't have many opportunities. Kids don't have any opportunities. So I want to specifically focus on that uh, territory and want to see what is available. Um, because this is also more of, um, it's not for a revenue-based model that I'm thinking. Hopefully, God will give me other engagements for making money, but this is more of, again, giving back. But then, I don't, I'm not looking for making it free because sometimes people don't value when you give things for free. Yeah. So I want really to um, to have a, some scholarship mechanism where people who cannot afford can also go through, but uh, it will be more uh, very subsidized uh, aspect. So more underprivileged uh, and specifically to in a city, which is not having all these facilities. Yeah. I gotcha. I gotcha. Very nice. Yep. Well, awesome. Let's go ahead and jump into our thriving three now. Our first question is, what's your favorite book, movie, or podcast? Pick one. Uh, book. Uh, my favorite book is uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Solid book. That has changed the way I am seeing things, I'm looking at things, and it's for every individual, I would highly recommend that book. So that is my go-to book. There we go. And what's one way you like to take care of yourself? Uh, by by saying no. That is uh, one way of uh, saying no to my kids uh, when they are pressuring me to play and when I'm not in the right mindset. Uh, saying no for calls in business uh, when I'm on back to back. So that is one way I am taking care of myself by, by saying no. 
And what is one action step you can take right now or continue to take if you're already doing it to meet that person who's already doing the public speaking classes slash schools in your target area in India? Uh, one action that I can take, uh, and this is uh, uh, so fortunate that I'm uh, traveling to India tomorrow, and I will be going to my hometown where I want to make this, so I, I can do, uh, so maybe I can just do some Googling and see what all public speaking schools that are there in my city, who are, who is doing it. So maybe uh, the objective is not to have my own objective is to have a school where underprivileged folks can go. So can I partner with them? Can I offer my expertise to them? Can I financially help them? Uh, so I, I let me, uh, so that would be another thing for me to do, to do my research, to see what kind of schools that are already there, what I can do to support that community. Sounds good. And I like how you're open to the partnering with them to do it. That's really cool. Yes. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Well, now we got our final series of questions. First one is, what is one limiting belief that continues to pop up in your life, if any? Um. One limiting belief is uh, the fear of, um, because of my body weight, there are a lot of things. Uh, I, I, I don't do it because I have that mental block. That what if something happens to my leg? What if something happens to my body? I will not be able to do other things. So, so that is one limiting belief. Um, because one time when you get hurt, you, that is always in my mind. So I had uh, a knee injury. So it's always in my mind. And okay, I don't want to do this because it will impact my knee. And it may not happen, but it's, it's going in my mind. So that I got you. Yeah. I got you. And you said it comes from primarily your body weight or does it come from other stuff as well? Uh, probably the body weight because maybe subconsciously, I think I, I believe that because of body weight, um, I, I may not be able to do this uh, specific thing physically, um, whether it is it is running, whether it is, uh, and, and in fact, just three months ago, it happened when I was playing with my son in the basement and I twisted my knee. Uh, so that really, that was the second instant. So then since that happened and I'm being very cautious uh, with that, and that is, I'm, I'm also restricting myself, but that is one area of more improvement for me is how I can go away with that limiting belief and make things happen. I gotcha. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. Well, what limiting actions or inactions reinforce this belief? Uh, I would say is taking care of me. Huh. Yeah. Which is uh, my my uh, orthopedic or probably my chiropractor asked me to to use a heating pad or the cold yeah actually heating pad three to five times in a day and that's not happening so probably yeah. I, I need to uh, do more of that. Uh, I gotcha. Yeah. I gotcha. There we go. That's a lot of times per day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. Well, if you were to change your limiting belief into an abundant phrase that really spoke to your heart in the way that you needed to hear it, what would that phrase be? My uh my uh knee is fit and fine and I'm all ready to have fun with my kids. So yeah. more fun with kids. So I would say, I mean, the the way I would challenge my limiting belief that there's no problem with my knee. I need to just focus on having fun with kids. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Cool, cool, cool. And when the limiting beliefs start to take over, what thoughts or actions do you resort to in order to take back control? Uh, I, I I go for help, take help, uh, take help with an expert who can help me in uh, in giving me the guidance or giving me the solution. 
So, yeah. so taking so knowing that export is also it's it's important. It's just not that I can go to anyone and everyone. Uh, who to go to is important. Yeah. And thank God I know that person. So, but I got gotcha. you. Last question for you: What is your favorite belief about yourself? Where there is a will, there is a way. I like it. Yep. Awesome. Well, Rahul, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. That's all we got for you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you for having me. Have a great rest of the day. Of course. Is there anything else you want to chat about before we sign off? No, I just want to uh, let our listeners know that to be positive, spread positivity. That's it. There we go. Well, if you guys are listening to this, make sure to check Rahul out. He has two books that are currently out. Is that right? They're currently out? That's correct. Awesome. And they are Be Action Oriented and Habits for Miracles. All the ways to contact him will be down in the show notes. Go ahead and buy a copy of each book and then buy a second copy. Send it to a friend. Make sure to rate and review the book on all the necessary platforms. That really helps us out when we are trying to get the word out there. Again, all the links to do so will be down in the show notes. Thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you on the next one. And on that note, we're out. <laughs>